Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we dive into episode 4, covering off a couple of extra hints and tips and tricks for the Innie Builds A300-600, the Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you're all enjoying the tutorial series so far, highlighting some of the current bugs upon release as well and how to work around some of them and departures and arrivals. And I hope you enjoyed episode 3 with the rather sporty landing during Storm Henk as well. If you're new to the channel, tune again perhaps for the first time, welcome on board. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and naturally share your thoughts down in the comments section below. Now today, very similar routing to the last couple of days. And uh, we're heading out of Manchester, currently in the climb up to our cruise of 210 for a flight to London. Gatwick repositioning India Lima here back to its base for Osprey Airways. In this video we're going to focus on holds and how to use uh, the FMC in the A300 in order to execute fly and exit automated holds. Really useful if you, like me, like to fly on the VATSIM network. So for the purposes of today, we're going to be flying the Kidley One Golf RNAV arrival, the Star, into London Gatwick. And that's because we're routing in from the north, out of Manchester, um, far Honley then to Kidley. And then we're going to route uh, to the west of London Heathrow. There's Heathrow there on the map. Uh, before heading into Midhurst's VOR, down through Tufos, Holly, Willow, Mayfield and then into Gatwick for our final destination today. Now you'll notice on the charts there's a bit of a random hold here at Delbo which is a bit odd, it's not on the line at all for the, for the actual arrival procedure and uh, there is also a hold at Mayfield which uh, might come in handy as well. We might be asked to do any of those, either of those when flying on the VATSIM network. Additionally, if you look at the charts, there's a little H next to Willow. I'll just zoom back in on the charts there. Willow's got that little H in a box, and that means there's an inset somewhere on the charts for a hold, and it's down here. There it is. So there's also a hold at Willow as well. Now we're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about holds, naturally that is the theme of today's episode, but also inputting dynamic waypoints like this into the FMC for the purpose of creating a hold. As you can see the little one there on the charts suggests uh, that it's only used during periods of, co of congestion in the London TMA, so therefore traffic from the north might be right required to hold at Delbo. So certainly if you're flying into Gatwick and it's incredibly busy or even part of an event on VATSIM, then uh, having charts is really important. You might well be asked to hold at Delbo if uh, it's super busy and you don't really want to be caught out trying to work out what that is because it's not in your flight plan. So into the tranquility of the A300 cockpit. <laughs> We can see Kidley there and we can see Honolulu. Now we saw on the charts a moment ago that Delbo boink, is actually just before Kidley. So how do we go about adding that in? If we were flying in now and London Control says to us expect 10 minute hold at Delbo then uh, what do we do? Well Honolulu is here, we can click into here like the other Airbus A320s and things and we enter the lateral revisions page from Honolulu. From that point, we can type in new waypoint, which is Delbo, Delta Echo Lima Bravo Oscar, and we can add it in there. So we can see his discontinuity has been generated, Kidley's just after that, and we've got Honolulu and then Delbo, which is only five minutes after as well, so we know that that's correct. Now if there are multiple waypoints called Delbo, we might get a little list asking us to select which one it is, and you, usually the top one is the closest. And then we can clear that discontinuity if we wish as well. Now, if I bring the, the charts back up on the screen here, you can see that Delbo's got a maximum speed of 240 knots and a minimum holding altitude of flight level 150, maximum holding altitude of flight level 200. So if we wanted to hold at Delbo, 
having been instructed by air traffic control. There's a bit of a dynamic uh, sort of hold usage. We can go back into the lateral revisions page for Delbo and then we can press hold on the right hand side and then it asks for us to check the data or change the data for the hold. So we can see here that the inbound course for the Delbo hold is 153 degrees. That matches the inbound course on our FMS so that's good. Um, it's a right turn because the outbound is a right turn then out 333 degrees and at time distance usually you want a one minute hold so if you do want to change that you can do one forward slash and it will change it to a one minute hold and recalculate the distance of each leg therefore currently 6.1 um, nautical miles so when we're happy that that is input as we want we can press insert now if you have a left turn in a hold What you can do is just type L for left and then input it into this uh, where it says turn R for right turn. You can replace that with an L to create a left turn. Insert and then we can see Delbo and then a right hold, speed 200 knots um, and then Kidley 150 after. On the charts then we can actually see that in action there can't we so we're already closing in on Holland rather rapidly because this is a super short route today um, so what we want to do is have a look at our entry and it says flight level 210 and we can enter the vertical revision for the hold as well so we can go to flight level 150 if we change that to at 150 and there we go what we need to do next is make sure that we are in a position for uh, entry into the hold so if we've got a specific altitude that we've been asked to enter the hold at, we can either go and select it, for example 170, and uh, perhaps uh, we just go into a normal descent, like open descent as it is in the A320s. We want to make sure our range ring is in, and if you wanted to time the hold leg, what you can do is stop the chrono by pressing the circle button, resetting it, and then as the wings roll level, hit start. So now we're getting a bit closer, there's our hold, it's just been generated, we're only a few miles away now, so we're going to um, head down to an altitude which matches that of the maximum and minimum holding for uh, Delbo. Make sure our heading bugs are in line. And then we can work into the descent. If you descend using level change, what you need to do is make sure that you've also selected a speed suitable for holds and if you're using vertical speed mode to descend make sure still you've got your speed set nicely so that you're within the speed limits for the hold in this case um, in this case a maximum of 240 knots for the hold at Delbo Because it's super short, we can see exactly what it wants us to do uh, for the, the hold itself and that matches the charts quite nicely and you can see it is offset from Kidley exactly as it is on the charts. And this typically is a very busy time anyway because we're going to be sorting out all of our approach data, we're going to make sure our minimums are in for the ILS approach that we're going to be doing and uh, getting everything else ready, you know, ILS tuning and all the rest of it. So it's a very, very busy time, uh, but it does mean that if you're flying a hold, you then also simultaneously need to make sure that you are really keeping an eye on the aeroplane there as well. So we can come down to a 600 foot per minute rate of descent. We're within the minimum holding altitudes anyway, or even 400 foot per minute rate of descent. And then we can also pop the seatbelt sign on just to make sure the punters are strapped in if you're in the passenger variant as we are today. And as we decelerate, 
you'll notice that the hold range ring is actually shrinking with us uh, because the aircraft is dynamically recalculating that turn radius and it knows we don't need to turn so wide because we've gone from 280 knots indicated airspeed down to currently 240 knots so if you've got your altitude right that's the first tick I show you guys the split screen again. If you get the altitude set correctly and then your speed set correctly and you've already cross-checked the data when you've input the hold carefully to make sure it's all done accurately, this is all going to work beautifully. And the next two things are going to be entering the hold and then how to exit the hold. If for any reason you want to change the hold speed, you can go into the hold vertical revisions and you can select whichever speed you want. So I've changed that now to 220 just so that we stay above minimum uh, clean, that green dot. And then we'll make sure that we've got that set so that it matches. We'll return back to a 600 foot per minute rate of descent. And we'll bring the range ring in just so we can monitor the entry into the hold nice and accurately. And you notice this time, compared to the descent episode, because we've managed the energy of the aircraft and we're thinking ahead of the aeroplane, we haven't had to use any speed brake just yet. While we enter, just going to continue to set up everything for our arrival. And here we go. The principles of this of course work the same for entry into holds that are within your flight plan as well. But instead of having to add that ad the additional waypoint like we've done for Delbo, you just select the one that you want to hold at. For example, Willow in your flight plan down here you would locate Willow there it is you would enter that page and then you would fill out the hold page tab there before inserting it into your flight plan okay so we're turning we're monitoring the aeroplane all the while and we need to make sure that we keep our heading bug in sync so now we know our outbound course and the hold is 333 degrees there it is we're going to set that to make sure that we are happy. If, for example, the LNAV goes a little bit messy or gets a bit confused, or we get vectors out of the hold immediately, we don't need to think about scrolling that heading bug really quickly to try and get the right heading selected. It's already set in the direction of our travel for each uh, leg of the hold. So it's important to keep that in line with your actual track. Okay, so now we fast forward a couple of circuits in the hold. We've remained in NAV the whole time. The only change now you might notice is we're at flight level 150. So you've got two options for the descent. I suppose it's personal preference really, both work just as well as the other. Level change, so you could go to uh, from 170 where we were originally down to 150 and then you could press down and enter level change and it will hold 220 quite nicely uh, but you'll get a slightly steeper descent. Or you can set 150 and then enter vertical speed mode and descend using vertical speed mode say 1000 foot per minute 
maintaining the speed that you want in the hold as well, but just having that smoother um, gradient for descent and a little bit more control over it, I suppose, as well. So two different options for you. Now, how do we exit the hold? So we're back on the outbound leg at the moment, uh, 333 three degrees. I've got for the next turn 153 degrees uh, in the process of being tuned, like so. And the aircraft's now going to commence that turn back towards Delbo. In the FMS down here, or the FMC, you can see hold right, which is what we're in at the moment, with immediate exit. So we can select that, and then what it will do is it will arm the exit, and as we arrive at Delbo, it will then continue with our flight planned route to Kidley, to then join the Kidley 1 Golf arrival into London Gatwick. Again, as before, if we were just to show the charts again. Um, if we were flying along and we were in the hold at Willow, which looks like that, the same principles apply, but because that is in the flight plan, all we would have to do is scroll down, find Willow, enter the vertical revisions page uh, on the right hand side, and then input the hold as we've done for this one that we're in at the minute at Delbo. And then to exit would be the same, so we would select immediate exit. That arms. Resume hold is then ready. We'll make sure in nav as well. Uh, and we've set whatever altitudes we need next. If we're flying on the VATSIM network, we might get something additional. And that might be, um, for example, Osprey 106 Alpha, leave the hold at Delbo, descend flight level 150, direct Kidley. And that's if, for example, we're holding at 170. We might get told, leave the hold, heading 180 degrees, descend flight level 130, in which case we would follow the instructions of ATC. If we were told to hit leave the hold now heading 180, we would just set heading select mode 180 and then revert to heading select uh, as the autopilot mode instead of nav. So there's a couple of things to think about, we're keeping it simple today, we're just going to exit the hold via the natural point at Delbo, then uh, head on route to Kidley. So speed's 220, we're already looking ahead on the charts, Kidley there's no speed restrictions, uh, but it's maximum speed 250 below up, uh, flight level 100 anyway. Uh, and we can see further down on the charts as we get to Tufos, and then Holly, we've got speed restrictions further. So 250 then becomes 220 max at Holly, down to flight level 70 at Willow. But we're not going to worry about that too much in this episode. We're just going to exit the hold to Kidley, as you can see now. There we go. So we're now inbound Kidley. The aircraft's got the straight lines on the nav display instead of the curved lines. But we're now leaving the hold to Kidley and then we'll continue onwards to Midhurst as we make our way into London Gatwick. And that is it folks. Holds, including a little bit of dynamic waypoint and dynamic hold input into the FMC in the Unibuilds A300 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you found it useful and I hope you're going to put it to good use as well on the network. It's certainly a really good tool to be able to execute, uh, certainly a good thing to be able to execute when flying on VATSIM. Hit like and subscribe, share your thoughts, tips and tricks as always down in the comments section below and I'll see you for a live stream in the very near future. In the meantime, happy flying and I'll see you very soon. Take care.